The guy with the big smile and not very big brain, let's face it, is telling Israel what to do in its hour of need. Are you kidding me? How did it come to this place, hmm? Joe, Israel knows what to do, all right? Leave them alone. They're good at this stuff. It's in their blood, quite frankly. Defending Israel is what they do. June 1981. Eight fighter jets are spotted in the skies over Baghdad, preparing to attack. Their target, the pride and joy of Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. It was one of the most important military surprises of all time. As the jets dive at their target, stunned Iraqis stare in disbelief. The insignia on the wings is the Star of David, the symbol of the Israeli Air Force. How could Israel strike from such a great distance without detection? So awesome. Israel took out the nuclear facilities in Iraq in 1981, uh, a famous mission captured on film, TV, and in paintings. Just an awesome uh, mission, and they successfully completed it. And guess where they were trained, the pilots? In America, in Utah. We helped get them ready. We knew how to help our allies back then. And sure, just like today, there's always a little bit of pushback from the left. As you know, the Israeli government has uh, made the threat that it might take military action to wipe out the Syrian missiles in Lebanon. If that were to be done against our wishes, would you consider that a violation of the terms of the laws under which the Israelis have obtained those weapons? They were always hassling Israel, right? But the presidents, trusted men like Reagan, uh, they did the right thing always by Israel. Throughout our history, even Bush, definitely Trump. And now Joe Biden, he's on the fence. We, see we, have, we saw what happened uh, the other night over Israel, the bombs exploding all over the place. What were we looking at, by the way? I, I was a little confused at times, but uh, here is essentially what went down. These drones coming from Iran over a thousand miles. Uh, the Shahad 136, about eight feet, an eight foot wingspan. In addition to various missiles being thrown Israel's way, uh, they were pretty ineffective, but Iran, uh, well, I don't know. Did they do this on purpose? Did they not hit on purpose? It's hard to tell. They did issue us a pretty stern, stern warning. Don't mess with us. Yep. The other night they came out and said, it is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. Oh, yeah? Well... Joe Biden's listening. Joe Biden conferring with his very weak national security team. And what are they conferring about? How to deal with Iran? I think it's how to appease the squad. Yeah, those women known for their anti-Semitism in the House of Representatives. You know, Joe thinks because a million years ago he met with Golda Meir, who is a great lady, but Joe has been telling this mostly fake story about it ever since. He just did so much of this stuff. It's in his muscle memory. I am a friend of Israel because I went to all those dinners over the years. When I first went to Israel back in 73, I met with Golda Meir. It was a phenomenal experience. And she sat in her office chain smoking and puffing and filling up the cigarettes and my lungs with smoke and reaching behind her in that desk and flipping those maps up and down that she had behind her, painting the most desperate picture that anyone could imagine. I was truly depressed after, really, no fooling. I was truly depressed after an hour. She was so convincing. Yeah, not hyperbole. Um, this was an act with Joe, um, and it continues. Notice the long pauses. Son, I was then 31 years old. She said, son, you look depressed. <laughs> Truly. I said, Madam Prime Minister, I am depressed. I said, you've just spent the last hour telling me, in effect, you have no chance. She said, one thing I didn't tell you. This is honest to God truth, Danny. She looked at me and said, one thing I didn't tell you you should know. We Jews 
have a secret weapon in our battle and dispute with the Arabs. We have no place else to go. And that is the God's truth. All right. Golda Meir, a great woman, and that's a great principle. But the insincerity and the bragging that this man has done his entire life, never, ever been tested. And now that he's president, he's losing all of the challenges, loses in Afghanistan, right? You know, the whole world saw this, especially Iran. We are a fundamentally uh, changed power, reduced power as a result of Joe Biden. Not to mention, well, his decrepit overall kind of presence, um, the cognitive decline, we're in big trouble and the world is taking advantage of us. By the way, what about the hostages? You know, there's still an infant in Hamas custody. That beautiful young woman is still in Hamas custody. Uh, the elderly, still Hamas holding these people. Who does that? Criminals and terrorists do that. And somehow we are worried about the constituency in America, and it is a real one, sadly, that is supporting the bad guys in all of this. Well, I don't know. I bet I could do a better job. I bet you could do a better job. There are a lot of fourth graders I know who could do a better job as president than Joe Biden is doing right now. Did you see this? Let's show Joe and then we'll have a conversation. Mr. Yeah. President, what is Mr. your President. message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Or else Are American I'm personnel not at that response? risk, Mr. President? That doesn't cut it and everybody knows it. You want to get something done? You got to have some follow up. You got to have some backbone. You have to have some guts and maybe a little outrageousness and maybe a little bit over the top, too. Don't be afraid of looking not elegant when you're defending America. North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Everybody was horrified. Ooh, how could he say something like that? So belligerent. It worked. It brought us closer to peace. Uh, not too long after that, Kim Jong-un and President Trump. This was beautiful. It drove the establishment crazy. It made me feel a lot safer. What Donald Trump exhibited is that old policy, really, or adage, whatever, peace through strength. That's what this country has been all about for decades until Joe Biden showed up. Um, this is, it's very simple, but it's powerful and it makes sense. The world now respects America's policy of peace through strength. The United States is again the confident leader of the free world. For 30 years since the end of World War II, our strategy has been to preserve peace through strength. In foreign affairs, I'll continue our policy of peace through strength. America is fulfilling our destiny as peacemaker, but it is peace through strength. We are stronger now than ever before. Fourth graders can understand it. Second graders can understand it. Can we take a look at uh, Donald Trump in the Situation Room for a moment? Notice anything about the nameplates? Uh, the nameplates are arrayed the way they normally are for, yep, uh, so people around the table can know who each other, um, you know, everybody's name, although they kind of should know that. Uh, in the Biden situation room, look at those nameplates. <laughs> they are arrayed so that the man at the head of the table, yeah, if you look way down there, that's Joe Biden. So he knows who everybody is. All right. Back to the other night. Didn't it feel a little bit like uh, the Gulf War? Remember? Um, who was it? Uh, back when we liked CNN, those guys, uh, and they were on the balcony over there in, in Iraq, and it was wild. Um, well, I don't want that to happen again, but with Joe Biden, it's damn near likely. They were all wrong. Everybody got it wrong. Donald Trump will start a war with Iran. We're worried that his words are going to start a war. I believe that he would even go so far as to start a war in order to prevent 
himself from being removed from office. And it goes on like this. Oh, so, and the opposite is happening. <laughs> the opposite seems to be happening.